Going for the bait, two protect shields remaining, oh. and he gets the shield, he... and now he can go for the blast burn. Oh, he can go for the blast burn as we see him load up on energy, go for a... Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, he gets two shields. He gets two shields from Caleb on a double bait. This is incredible. I... Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I recently competed in the Europe International Championships. This is the third time uh, that the Pokemon company has hosted it for Pokemon Go. And it was the largest tournament to date in the history of Pokemon Go for official tournaments. Uh, I believe there was a cap of 320 players and I think 319 showed up. Uh, so a lot of players and double elimination bracket. And overall, I placed 17th, tied for 17th. So I feel pretty good about it. So the team I ran was, of course, Sebastian with a Nylape, Charger Bug, Mana Buzz, Dugong, and Shadow Whiskash. Pretty much standard moveset for everything. Uh, Nylape was running Night Slash and Shadow Ball. Um, overall, I just thought that it made the mirror matchup a lot more comfortable. Of course, uh, it makes my team a little bit weaker to Gligar, but that's why I have that Dugong on my team. Really shuts it down. Mana Buzz is pretty strong against it as well. And then obviously, Whiskash has a lot of play. The team operated pretty well overall. I'll talk about uh, kind of my off-stream matches briefly before I show my stream matches. Had some close ones, especially early on. The second round opponent against Sammy, I straight up just lost. And uh, against him, uh, he had a Shadow Charm Ninetales, which I didn't really account for while team building, but it's actually very, very strong into my team. Uh, pretty much beats everything, especially shields up outside of the Bastiodon. Really great line calls from Sammy and then uh, just went, dropped me down to loose bracket pretty early on. After that, I pretty much just kind of just played as best as I could around different opponents. Some teams were definitely weak to Bastion, so I brought the Bastion. Um, a lot of teams in my specific group were not as weak to it. Um, however, the funny part is uh, my podcast co-host, Anacor, his brother actually stole my team, Young Cause, and uh, he ran it all the way to winner's finals. He said on his, uh, in his group, he actually uh, faced multiple players with four or five times weakness of Bastion. So sometimes the luck of draw, but overall it was still great bench pressure. And after a string of wins on the loser's bracket in day number one, we were able to make our way to the loser's finals on day number one. My opponent in the loser's finals was Jay the underdog. So I'll show you the footage of my battles against him. Before we get into the battles, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you'd like private one-on-one -on -one coaching, scrims against me, some of my lead guides and strategies ahead of time, or even tune into my live stream battles, feel free to sign up through the Patreon link down below. A familiar name that I know pretty well is, is coming up soon, which is going to be Caleb Pang. I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, is, is Caleb Pang again on the Bastiodon? Yes, you know, uh, he is running the Bastion. I see it in the corner of my eye. I can confirm he is running the Bastion. And also, I didn't even need to look because I know if he's doing well in the tournament, <laughs> he's running Bastion because when he sits the Bastion on, he doesn't do as well in the tournament. So I can't confirm he does have that Bastion on. I mean, I've been very impressed with his Bastion on gameplay at uh, regionals that he played before. And I, I can't wait to see him play. We talked a little bit before and he said, hey, people are not building against Bastiodon. Like, this tournament isn't GBL. People are not yeah. really aware of Bastiodon as a threat. So so they're going very, very soft against it. But I think that the players are ready. So we're going into the game very soon. You can see for yourself how Caleb is piloting that Bastiodon. There it oh, is. Oh, that is not weak against Bastiodon. Yeah, <laughs> and that has a lot of good Pokemon versus you have the Claude Sire, you have the Polyrath, you even have the Lantern that can beat it as well because of that super effective Surf. I actually don't even think Giratina yeah. Origin is terrible against it. I would say I think I would favor the Bastiodon in all shield scenarios just because it's so bulky, but I don't think it's that bad. It's getting kind of close. It still leaves like a... a relatively decent amount to farm down, but not too much that Bastiodon gets like to another attack necessarily. So th th this is actually a soft lose against Bastiodon, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're gonna have the hard counters as well because you have the yeah. mud shot too. You don't even have the poison oh, sting on that Cod Sire. So you, and you're running the regular Polyrath, so you, you even have more bulk to yeah. go for a full farm down. And then on Caleb Pang's side, of course, he is that bringing that Bastion. Will it be a cheerleader once again, or will it be in the battle and he is 
supporting it with the Shadow Whizcash, the Dugong, Annihilate, Man the Buzz, and Charge Bug. So pretty meta team plus that Bastiodon. What do you think about Shadow Whizcash? I mean, it's a very, very interesting question right now. This yeah. is a very unique Pokemon, you know. I think overall, in past previous tournaments, it feels like you rely on the Skull debuff. It feels like, oh, actually, wait, we're just in the battle already. It's oh. going to be that Shadow Clodsire versus Mandibuzz in the lead here. And remember, the Clodsire does have the Stone Edge. And I, if I said Shadow, I meant Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a very good point. Uh, Clonsire can't be Shadow. That that could be an interesting pick to be. That fair. would but be amazing. You have such a big advantage with the Stone Edge here in this matchup. However, Mandibus, how bulky is what? That did nothing! Yeah, it literally did nothing. And the problem is you can never mud shot down. So it's quite clear you're going to need three Stone Edges to knock out this Mandibus. And how many Dark Pulses are you going to need to take out the Clonsire? Can you also take out the Clonsire with three Dark Pulses? I don't know if you can do it. I think you might need three Dark Pulses in an air. Aerial Ace, so this is bulk on bulk here to start us off. Yeah, I think you might need even more, about 10-ish, I want to say. <laughs> that is not a lot of damage. Even though, yeah, you're right, Clotsire is already in the yellow, so Manibus is really putting up a fight in this absolute disadvantage of, of attack typing here. I mean, you're going to take the Stone Edge here, and then you can get to the next Dark Pulse, and then you maybe can get to an Aerial Ace here before, though the Stone Edge is just right there already. So looks like Clotsire is going to comfortably win this Zero Protect Shield matchup, and Caleb Payne is going to throw that Dark Pulse and probably just... Just let the Mandibuzz go and then try to go for some farm down. He's actually quite happy because yeah. as long as Clodsire is out of the way for Charge Bug, exactly. he's going to have a much better time. Yeah, Charger Bug is not going to be walled. And Charger Bug is actually looking so good into the backline of Jay the Underdog. Like, Caleb would be super fine to just put all the shields on it. And now, oh, that is a big earthquake coming out on to the Annihilate. And this is an ABB team weak to Charger Bug, and you yeah. stayed in the lead with that Claude Sire. So now Charger Bug is going to be down a Protect Shield, but it's going to have a huge advantage in the back. And going to try to swap here because Mandibuzz really soaks Annihilate energy. So now this Mandibuzz is definitely going to be staying in because you would rather take yeah. the charge attacks on the Mandibuzz than your Polyrath. Yeah, but Polyrath also doesn't have the greatest time oh, against Oh, he the gets Annihilate. the bait on the Aerial Ace as well. Oh, that is it's very, very big. And now Caleb Peng is also going for the bait as well. The slightly faster pacing attack, X Scissor, is going to get shielded by the Mandibuzz. So both players are baiting. Yeah, and it looks like you want to keep the Mandibuzz around to try to knock this out. Actually just going for the Aerial Ace. Maybe thinking that you need to land an Aerial Ace plus a Dark Pulse. But you would think you would want to land the Dark Pulse yeah. first just to ensure it. But it seems like you're going to double Protect Shield this Mandibuzz. And then here comes the Dark Pulse. I don't think this is enough for a Charger Bug. That is a frenzy of a swipe on that Dark Pulse, by the way. <laughs> I think he's using the double finger technique, but the Charger Bug is going to keep pacing, throwing those Volt Switches. And I think we are already almost at double discharge right here. Is this going to get shielded? This is not going to get shielded. And we're going to swap immediately into the Polyrath. And now there's another discharge coming. You have to shield this if you're Jay the Underdark. That is so much damage. And now Annihilate will just be happy in the matchup against the Polyrath. And this is not Shadow Polyrath. And you already have the Shadow Ball banked. This is not enough to knock out. But plus, a Night Slash is probably going to be able to do it for Caleb Pang. So all that energy they banked up that... Jay the Underdark tried to soak on the Mandibuzz is now going into the Polyrath. Do you just throw the Night Slash before the Scald? And no, you don't throw, but this is not enough. And actually, you can probably just get the counter down yeah. if you're Caleb. Get the counter down and then throw the weakest Shadow Ball into a Mandibuzz that the world has ever seen. However, it will be enough as this Mandibuzz is on 10 HP, basically. So Shadow Ball is going to connect and Caleb Hang leads 1-0. And it's much easier to use this energy when the Mandibuzz is so low health. And that is going to be a knockout here. And that Charger Bug in the back, of course, no Bastion on for yeah. Caleb in that game number one. But as soon as he saw that the Clodsire is going to be in the lead for Jay the Underdog, and then, of course, Jay the Underdog had that ABB weak team to that Charger Bug. That Charger Bug was able to get both Protect Shields yeah. and almost knock out all of that Mandibuzz. Yeah. yeah, and here we are locked in to game number two. Remember, this is a loser's final so one trainer will be eliminated and one trainer will make it on to day number two and it's the same leads once again and it's the same back line look at this and wow. does jay the underdog make an adjustment here are we rematching this it doesn't look like we're making adjustments here they, they, jay the underdog i'm sorry is going to try 
or he's going to hope that there is something different in Caleb Peng's back. Yeah, I mean, hope that Caleb made the adjustment, but Caleb won at game number one and just has the same thing here. Clodsire will, of course, win this matchup. Do you then try to pivot the Clodsire and hold it on for the back line? Because we know a Clodsire at very low health can still do a lot against a charge bug. So maybe he'll try to get this Mandibuzz low. Like, what if you Stone Edge here and this Mandibuzz is really low? Why don't you swap now? Because you're going to have a tough yeah. time finish off the Mandibuzz. Maybe you pivot here, but we're going to see what Jay the Underdog decides yeah, to do. You could pivot into your own Mandibuzz as well, and even try to go for a catch that gets you a Sneak Snarl. Yeah, no, exactly. And here comes the Dark Pulse into the Cloud Sire. Looks like Jay the Underdog is just staying here for now, just going to try to soft win this matchup, almost at the Stone Edge, but has to take one more Dark Pulse. And this is literally just playing out how it was yep. in game number one, and I don't think Jay the Underdog wants to do that with Charger Bug in the back. Yeah, Charger Bug looks so good against his team as well, right? There is Lantern, Polyrath, and Skarmory that are hard answered by the Charger Bug. Oh, an undercharge, trying to not knock out the Mandibuzz, try to get a mud shot down, and here comes the Annihilate, once again, gonna try to go for the counter down. Now, does Caleb actually adjust? Does he not protect shield the Earthquake, knowing that Charger Bug is gonna be so strong in the back? No, just plays it the same way, but shaking his head a little bit. Maybe I should've saved that shield for the Charger Bug, but decides to protect shield the Earthquake. Or he could have also thrown a Night Slash there to knock it out. It, yeah. It's just the same game. What is what is this? I've never seen this before. Yeah, it's uh, almost like a replay, oh. and here's the same thing, and the Mandibuzz Buzz is just going to stay in once again because the Manda Buzz can't swap out because you don't want to mess with this Charger Bug on your Polyrath. You'd rather take the bulk here and actually getting a full Snarl in there. So that's actually a huge break that Jay Underdog yeah. did not get in the game number one, but the, the Protect Shield is the same. Yeah, the Protect Shield on the X Scissor yet again, and Caleb is trying to go for a good timing and not throwing after one Vault, but she couldn't because there was the Dark Pulse registered already. We're going to Shield here, and that just makes sense. You want to keep this Charger Bug healthy. You want to go after two Vault Switches, and after this Dark Pulse, I think that is going to be happening. Yeah, you want to try to go on the turn 8 out of the turn 9 to try to clip the attack, but exactly. it's hard to do if the other Pokemon has yeah. energy. So Jay the Underdog threw his energy, and that gave Caleb the advantage to try to throw here, and actually throws the Discharge, gets the second Protect Shield here, and now you're going to try to race to this Discharge. Do you get there first? No. You get to the Dark Pulse first. Is this going to be enough? Charger Buck has some decent bulk. Can he hang on to the neutral Dark Pulse to throw this Discharge? And he does! He's going to be able to throw it, but waits a turn to see if there's a swap first. So waited to see if the Snarl is going to be coming through. So he makes sure and lands it onto the Mandibuzz. But now Annihilate has all this energy. Yeah, and this is just like the game before the Annihilate, uh, the catch off the uh, uh, discharge would have been very, very bad for Polyrath, but you need this damage on the Mandibuzz later. So we're going to see how the Annihilate is countering down the Polyrath right here. Night Slash is going to be used right there. This is not a lot of HP on the Polyrath. No, it's going to be resisted, but it's still the Mandibuzz just has no Boom. health remaining, and there's the knockout in one counter. Two counters, Caleb Pang secures the victory. Two to zero, it is gonna be moving on to day number two at the European International Championships. Caleb Pang living up to his name. He is such a fantastic trainer. He has been in regionals, finals before, and maybe this is his time to win a big tournament. Yeah, just like tournaments before, those games were similar, and yeah. just like tournaments before, Caleb bring, Pang brings the basket on, but relies on those strong meta picks because he is one of the best at playing those strong meta picks and his strategy was great in those two games even though they played out almost exactly the same i mean it was up to jay the underdog to try to make a different move yeah. because caleb is like you want to run it back i love to run it back yeah, after day number one, uh, I had some time to rest up. And then for day number two, I did start on the loser side yet again because I already lost one, my pretty much freebie loss for the tournament. And my first opponent is actually the world champion, it's Axon. And so that luckily was shown on stream as well. So I'll show the footage of that battle right now. And here, oh man, here we go. This is a special battle. Caleb Peng versus Ix Axon, a content creator and shoutcaster with Bass Udon versus a world champion. I'm gonna have to stand up for this one because this is elite. <laughs> Caleb Peng, which we know has been a multiple time finalist, always bringing that Bass on, not always using it. We didn't see it in day number one. Will he pull it out in day number two versus Ix Axon team? 
one of the few trainers running the Registeel. I don't think we've actually seen its accent on stage yet we at haven't. EYC. We haven't. We have not seen these two. Actually, no, Caleb Ping was on yesterday, but we haven't seen its accent. You're right. And what's cool is the Bastiodon into Charizard, the Bastiodon into Cresselia, the Bastiodon into Shadow Dragonair. It looks pretty potent. It's a good matchup. It's a good matchup for that Bastion. It's it's not necessarily a good trainer matchup because you don't necessarily want to see the world champ, but in terms of opportunity to have that Bastion be effective, you might have that opportunity in this series. Of course, you do have the meta picks of the Shadow Wizcash, Mandibuzz, Charge Bug, Annihilate, and Dugong. Those are the five Pokemon we saw yesterday. Yeah, absolutely solid team right there. As uh, I do love the Dugong, it's very flexible in this meta. Even against matchups that are pretty polarizing, it can still do super effective damage. As we do see its Axe's team with the Shadow Dragonair dominant in previous seasons. Reggie Steel, the Cresselia with Moonblast, Lickitung, a Shadow Charizard, much like Arrow before, and Shadow Wizcash. Arrow's still in it, by the way. You'll see him later today. Yeah, and how about that Shadow Charizard? We saw Arrow have it. He used it a little bit in his series. We're going to see if its accent pulls it out here. But a crazy thing about Shadow Dragonair, you can actually beat Bastion on in one protect shield situation. It's actually nuts because... Aqu Aqua Tail is a, is a bit too strong. It got buffed recently. World of Wonders. <laughs> world of, it did World of Wonders for the Aqua Tail here. And here we are. We're starting off in the loser side of this top cut. It's going to be the Charizard in the Charge Bug. Safe swap into Wizcash. All right, the Charge Bug leading the charge here, looking to go for an X Scissor just before a Scald can be reached by the Shadow Wizcash. This is going to be doing a good amount of damage. Now, will Caleb decide to opt out into the Dugong? Yes, he does, getting in right away and catching this charge move of Mud Bomb. And but since you got all this energy with that Shadow Wizcash, can you get to that Triple Mud Bomb is what you're going to need to take out this Dugong. But you definitely can't get to the Triple Mud Bomb before the Icy Wind is available. So it looks like Caleb is definitely going to retain that alignment. But can its accent find a window to get energy on Shadow Charizard? Yeah, Caleb right here with the Dugong needs to do an Icy Wind just before another Mud Bomb can be reached. This is obviously going to be putting pressure on that shield. And if it doesn't, it lands, he gets the clean knockout. This is honestly so clunky for its accent. He's going to come in with the Charizard. He's going to try to bank up some energy here, but you're going to have to commit a Dragon Claw before the Icy Wind is available. No! Or... He's committing to the full farm down, wanting tons of energy. Wow, that is risky here to use the Protect Shield, but you're right. You're going to get so much energy here, and even a resistant Blast Burn is obviously going to do a lot of damage into a Charger uh -oh. Bug. Uh-oh, you thought, you thought Skeletors was scary? I want to introduce you to Charizard. And he's going for the bait. Two Protect Shields remaining, oh. and he gets the Shield. He, and now he can go for the Blast Burn! Oh, he can go for the Blast Burn as we see him load up on energy. Go for a... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, he gets two shields! He gets two shields from Caleb on a double bait! This is incredible! I've honestly never seen its accent play this way. He is going for the double bait! And oh. it's swapped on into the Mandibuzz. A brilliant catch by Caleb to secure that the Charger Bug won't get knocked out. This is a beautiful dance of Pokemon right now as we do see Registeel come out onto the field. Now, the great thing about Charger Bug still lurking in the back end is it resists both Zap Cannon and Focus Blast. Do you try to go for some type of undercharge here? It's going to be hard to knock out the Charger Bug. You're going to need two attacks from this Registeel to knock out. So how do you get those two attacks? Are you going to try to undercharge the Zap Cannon or would you prefer this Mandibuzz is out of the battle? No, he goes for the full boom right there, sending Mandibuzz back into the Pokeball. Charger Bug now has a tall order. He needs to get rid of Reggie Steel. He needs to fast move down the Charizard. And going for the discharge here, it's Axe deciding to protect you the first one to avoid an Excisor bait later on and does properly protect you there. Charger Bug is resisting all this damage, but a Zap Cannon and Focus Blast is still going to do a lot. Yeah, but this is the thing. Switch Clock is coming back up, and there is an opportunity before us because Charger Bug cannot fast move down in time. It's going to have to throw a Discharge. Can it's Atten, the world champion, catch the charge move? Will Caleb Pang have the composure? And it does it. Does it deep up there? Here we go. And can you swap on the Charizard? Does it go for no. it? No! Caleb holds it! Holden is going to be able to throw the discharge now against its action, and this is going to be doing just enough damage, hopefully, to knock out the Reggie Steel. The world champ swings and he misses on that catch, and Caleb Peng is able to take a 1 0 lead against its action there. 
really awesome use of that charger bug. He danced around the entire battle. He was able to avoid the burn of the Charizard and also put a little bit of a dent into that Whizcash and eventually win the game against Registeel. Wow. You can see it, these NA players are so composed on stage. And, and earlier we see so much energy from EU. That's an interesting dynamic. That game was so intense. The Dragon Claw baits, the Blast Burn caught on Mandibuzz, the no catch on Charizard and getting the farm down, but both of them are just calm. Even, They're just both collected. Like, this is so good. Even though its accent looks reserved, I can promise you there's a ton of competitiveness, competitiveness deep down. He wants to win. He is not content with one world championship. He wants to win another one, and he is not able to land that Blast Burn. How about this? Was almost at the Blast Burn, and then the perfect swap oh. on perfect timing. If you were one wing attack off, you might have got burnt. Yes, and wow, Caleb Hang recognizing a good win condition here with Charge Bug, knowing that there might just be a Reggie Steel in the back. I'm going to need to capitalize on that. Yeah, and different from the other electric bug type like the Galvantula, which does about half the health with that Zap Cannon or Focus Blast, the Charger Bug can actually soak it a little bit better. And here we are into game number two, and it's Axon actually winning the lead this time. It's an ABB team, strong against Registeel in the back, but Registeel was in the front. Save swap into the Shadow Whizcat, made by the Shadow Dragon there, but you're gonna have to protect Shield. All right, so for those of you who might have just missed that, it was Registeel versus Mandibuzz lead, and then we saw the swap out by Caleb into the Whizcat, and an answer with Shadow Dragon there. And the problem is, you're not gonna get much shot down here, but you definitely do not want to lose the alignment here if you are it's accident. You want to keep that red shield into the Mandibuzz. This is a no protect shield from Caleb, but you're going to take a protect shield back with this mud bomb. This is a perfect setup, especially with an annihilate sweep here on Caleb Pang's side. There is no hard counter in the back. There is no charge. Oh, go. There is no Cresselia. He gets switch alignment and my goodness, Caleb Pang's annihilate is going to be having fun. Yeah, and you're going to try to go for the mud shot down, which this energy will be quite valuable against the back line. Actually, going Going for the lock on down. That is a world champ move oh, right there, but it doesn't able pay to get off. It. Not able to get it in time. Is forced to give up no shields here because he needs Reggie Steel to utilize his bulk and utilize the hard hitting charge move to get a shield advantage. And there's that annihilate. And he's going to try to land the zap cannon into the annihilate. If this does land, that means you're now in mud bomb range. And if you get the debuff, it's going to be hard to get through that Whizcash. Here comes the Whizcash, and he did get the debuff this time. Swapped it off though into the Mandibuzz. Oh my goodness. This buff after D or debuff after debuff. We now have the skull is going to be coming through the coin toss here. Will Mandibuzz's attack drop? Can Whizcash overcome the flyer? And protect shielding on that first skull here. No debuff. So does its accent then give up his protect shield into an early ace though? Caleb Pink decided to go for the lower energy attack because he knows its accent will want to protect you because there's no debuff yet. Yes, wanting to go for Dark Pulse now, the harder hitting move here, as we will probably see. A sh are we going to see a shield that's accent? And he, he does. does he does at the last shield. second. Yeah, giving up that final shield. And again, it's very important. The reason why he did that, you mentioned it before, is the Scald debuff. He has to shield the harder hitting moves first. And if he goes 0 for 2 here, this might be a tough break for the world champ. And he does finally get that debuff. And he can actually get to another skull before the Dark Post is available. But at this point, the timers are almost coming back up. And you can get back into that Annihilate because this Whizcash is energy dry. Yes, but Mandibuzz, oh, double debuff right here. Looking to go for Dark Pulse regardless. I think in this situation, if you're Caleb Peng, you're basically sacrificing the Mandibuzz and hoping its accent doesn't overload too much on energy. Yeah, and this, and this Whizcash is just holding on to that energy, to your point. It's not even threatened by Dark Pulse here. It's literally just trying to hold on to energy to be able to knock out the Annihilate. Its accent knows he's in a tough situation here because he either needs to double Mud Bomb the Annihilate or get to a Zap Cannon. I don't see how he's going to do that. Yeah, he's going for the uh, the Scald here. This is going to be knocking out the Mandibuzz. His no shield is given. Reggie Steel has quite a bit of health left, and I imagine it might be able to win the race with Lock On as it's high energy gain. The Scald being thrown right away. Caleb Pang praying that the attack debuff does not happen because Reggie Steel would definitely survive then. You hear both these trainers say GG, but it's not quite over yet. You just need to get to an attack, but Caleb Pang is at the Shadow Bowl, and he's going to be able to take down the world champion in a clean 2-0.
Yeah, the Shadow Ball gonna be able to connect, knocking out the Reggie Steel, and now countering down the Wiz Cash. Kayla Pang doing a beautiful 2-0 sweep right there against the previous world champion. And even in a negative situation, leading that Mandibuzz into the Reggie Steel, registering that its accent didn't have an answer to that safe swap shadow whiz cash. Yes, you have the Cresselia and the Lickitung, but those were not available, and its action did have an opportunity to keep the alignment, but decided to drop it on the Shadow Dragonair. Against Axon's team more specifically, I think I definitely had a team comp advantage uh, because uh, there's a lot of things that just had a lot of play. Mandibus only really had one check, so uh, despite me beating him, I think uh, I definitely had more of an advantage going into that matchup, and I think with more even team compositions, that could have gone a completely different way. After my battle with Axon, I had to play Onion Frank, and I unfortunately did lose uh, there, so that was pretty much the end of my EUIC run. Um, I went 1-2 uh, against Onion Frank. Uh, definitely could have played a little better to find some win cons there. Um, his team was actually fairly strong into mine, but uh, I think my team still had a lot of play. Uh, so overall, looking back on my team, especially because we have, what, I think about a month and a half left of this specific meta. Oh my goodness. Oh, she's not a fan of this meta. All right, so um, we still have about, uh, about a month and a half of this meta, and uh, looking at this team in particular, I like it a lot. Um, obviously, there's not as much footage in my battles this time around, so uh, definitely study the matchups that I did show that were showed on stream. But yeah, overall, I uh, like the team a lot. If you end up using the team yourself at a future regional uh, or at a local tournament, please let me know. Let me know how it goes. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share. Subscribe for future content. Hit that notification bell to get alerted right when I post a new video. And I'll catch you all next time.